So, uh, what is needs to get done at this point? Uh, so obviously I have that collision bug. I should almost certainly fix that first before doing anything else. <coughs> Why do I stream so rarely? Um, so I'm streaming all development work that I do on this project so far. And... Uh, so I have to both be in the mood to work on it and it has to be uh, at a time when is reasonable to stream and I can't I don't like the idea of streaming after 10 p.m. because that's the time when we're supposed to be quiet in our apartments and not bother neighbors and I doubt talking at this volume would bother the neighbors but I don't know for sure and I just like to not take chances uh, and so unfortunately for the last couple of weeks my sleep schedule has been messed up and I've been sleeping during sort of prime streaming time so I haven't really had a chance to do it and that's why I'm doing it this early because I'm gonna go to bed after I do this um, so uh, so <clears throat> one of the things with the collision stuff too is that even if I get this particular thing working I don't actually know like how accurate it is like you know it looked reasonable from first person but I can't actually see that I'm like bumping right up exactly against things so that's going to be the thing to work on I think after that is either a third person camera or having objects in the world that collide you know not necessarily objects that do anything interesting they'll just be cubes but they'll collide so more some kind of non-first person collision for checking collision is working right uh, and right now the collision system is kind of tied up with the first person not first person with the player physics I kind of didn't really do a separate thing so if I so third person may be the easiest way to do that or I'll have to write some non-player physics Yes, indeed, this is a good time for Europeans. It's just usually I haven't felt like streaming at this time of day. Um, uh, it just uh, isn't one I really felt like doing work. Uh, partly it's been getting hot here. I, I have my... I had to set up my air conditioner now, and so it's just all a pain. So anyway, we'll do it some today. I don't know if I'll do it more this time in the future or not. All right, so uh, the physics. Okay, so it's not really th physics, probably so much as um, so. It could be that the gather is broken, or it could be that the stuff that's cached in the chunks is broken. Um, and I was thinking maybe I should render them. Oh, here, right. Here's the comment. PCR for negative 65, negative 20 is not the same point as still being created in the message on creator. Right. So. Right. So I could do a memory breakpoint if that's a consistent behavior. So I want to look at this. MC is the mesh chunk. The mesh chunk is getting copied so that I can't do a data breakpoint on it. Right, and so I was saying maybe I need to stop the way I'm currently copying that so that I can debug that. So I guess I'll do that work. I'm going to change how that is stored. So that's a pretty straightforward refactoring, I hope, but it does involve memory management, so it does require a little care. Uh, where's my header file? What's the header file for this? Oh, OBG funks. Oh, data, right, okay, data. So the whole thing right now is that the mesh cache directly stores mesh chunks, and I want to change it to store mesh chunk pointers. That way I can allocate the pointer somewhere and then just store it in here instead of copying it in here. That way the pointers inside the mesh chunk will be stay in the same place in memory, and that means this 
that specifically means this fizz chunk will stay in the same place in memory, which means all of this will stay in the same place in memory, which means that particular column will stay in the same place in memory. And therefore, I'd be able to do a data breakpoint if that's the issue. <clears throat> so let's just compile with that change and find all the places that break and fix them all. And this is all just mindless. I'm assuming I don't have to do any smarts. So here we do that. Now it's going to call free mesh chunk. So free mesh chunk clearly needs to do something different. And then here is the tricky one. Here we have to say mesh cache slot y of slot x equals new mc. And now the caller needs to not free it as well. OK, so let me write down this stuff so I don't forget. So set mesh chunk for cohort caller. Um, let's actually do that over here so I don't forget. See if it gets buried away in the code somewhere. Caller doesn't free. Um, and then what was the other one? And free mesh chunk. Mesh chunk does free. Uh, this is the old single threaded one, I think. So it needs to actually allocate it at that point, and I'm just going to make it fail. Um, because we don't actually use a single thread path. Oh, that's right. That was the other way I was going to debug this, was go back to a single threaded path. Um, and with a single threaded path, I can hopefully have a much simpler time debugging it. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Okay, if the chunk is wrong, then we do that. That's all fine, because that will internally take care of it. Uh, so this now needs to check if it's null. In fact, a bunch of places need to check if it's null. In fact, we probably can use that rather than the vbuff to test. Rather than vbuffing null. But we'll leave them both for now. OK, now I have to do these two things. Free mesh chunk. I don't know, free, I'm going to see. And set mesh chunk for cord. What did I say? It needs to not free now. Which is that one right there. Because let's just do this. MC equals no. Uh, although. It's just going to get overwritten here, so there's really no need to do that. Eh, let's do it just in case. This to be on the safe side. All right, so now I'm going to have a bunch of null mesh caches that break when I run this. So I just have to have them all guard things. Uh, yeah. Right, so this whole way I initialized it doesn't need to happen this way anymore. It can just set them all to zero. And free them if they already exist, because in case you reinitialize these, I don't know if you do. Probably should separate these out to separate functions. So let's just actually do that. And we'll do that by not actually implementing the other function. See the next place it crashes. Uh huh. Yeah. If MC and. I never do shoutouts. Are they actually watching? Uh, 
Oh, well, now he's checking the trunk, so. If MC is null, or these things are true. Dun, 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 dun. Now, the only thing about this is if, <coughs> if we, uh, uh, what is this code doing? Is this the old single threaded code? Yeah, it's a single threaded code, okay. Because it never frees the old one, but that's fine. That's, what, what do you mean you can't? Uh, so what it does mean is that by doing all this, uh, hello, JJ and Austin. So what this does mean is that uh, by doing by doing this perilous thing of just running and finding the places that it crashes, I could easily be missing places in the code that were still checking it and that I just haven't hit yet. However, this project is currently very simple and doesn't have a lot of conditional logic, so there probably aren't a lot of places accessing the mesh cache that I haven't exercised. It's certainly possible there's one or two, um, but uh, because it's so early, it seems pretty unlikely. Okay, so now um, I keep running into things and okay, yeah, look, this is just totally mismatched because my head is not supposed to be in the ground. Uh, so I don't know if this is the same mismatch it was before or if it's a different mismatch because I didn't actually make it out to the place where it was crashing before. They are satisfied. Well, that is good because that's all they're going to get. I'm not going to say JJ and Austin's name ever again, uh, except that time. Okay, yeah, so here's where it died before, somewhere out here, somewhere out here. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so it is still dying in the same place. Uh, hang on, let me do something. Let me let you get the whole thing. <clears throat> Somebody cleaning my windows, so. Um, dun, dun, dun. Um, so where were we? JJ and Austin, block size is smaller. No, yeah, so uh, uh, it's arbitrary. And the only thing that really implies the block size right now is the player height, the, the eye height. And I don't even remember what the eye height is. Um, oh, it, that was something we did when we did the physics, I think. Size. Oh, it's passed in. In main, I guess. Physics. Move walkable. Uh, camera velocity, camera bounds, camera bounds. So four, so yeah, um, so the player's height is, uh, player is incredibly narrow. He's one, he's half a voxel wide and, and thick because this doesn't rotate and four voxels tall. Well, his eyes are. 4.25, so he's probably 4.5 voxels tall. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't say their names again. If I were to say their names again, that would break my rule before about not saying JJ and Austin anymore. So obviously I'm not going to say their names. I was talking about Austin, the city in Texas, uh, because I lived in Texas for a couple years, and I went to Austin once, maybe twice. Um, and, you know, one of the things, obviously, is that, you know, you have an index variable like i, and then the next one that you use is j, and then the next one you use is k, but you can't use l because l and uppercase i in some fonts are too similar, so you have to stop there, and m and n get used for other things, n is the number. Uh, so you could go backwards for counting variables, but that's kind of dumb, too. So I tend to use i and then jj and kk. So that's where jj and Austin come from is from index variables and uh, from living in Texas. So, um, so where were we? Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's why the player, I picked this height, yeah, because I want it to be different from Minecraft. So uh, yeah, you could be, uh, it could be that 
uh, maybe these voxels are actually Minecraft sized and you're a giant. So who knows? Uh, but you are definitely four voxels off the top of the ground, except when I had that bug, when, except that due to that bug you saw, I was only seemed to be one thing tall. Okay, so, so this was happening at the same place. So now we can say that the one for negative 65, negative 25. So we can look where the fist chick chunk run gets created again, chunk run. And that is, Uh, build physcom. Yeah, so here we go. So xy is that the world space xy coordinates? No, that is the local coordinates. Um, yeah, because it's within the partial. Um, but build fizz chunk, I do have the w and x right explicitly for this. Here we go. So we can breakpoint here and see it get generated. Oh, I need to also enable it in the other spot too. So here we go. So first we see it get generated. And we step here. And um, step. And that returned this. Why can't I not copy it? Can I not copy it? I copied the whole line. OK, so that was the variable there. And let's go ahead and go ahead and set the data breakpoint just in case. So we can get this variable. Then we say breakpoints data star void star 0x17 for d. To CE0. Uh, star void star 0x. How's that an invalid expression? In star. Okay, I don't know what, why the void star doesn't work, but okay. Okay, so I'm not hitting the data breakpoint. Go over here. Try to get a chunk that has that. There we go. Okay, make sure the A is the world space coordinates. What there are, which is based on X zero. I don't even know. Mesh chunk size, I, these are in chunk coordinates. Okay, yeah, so that is correct. Okay, so I believe that is all actually looking at the right thing. And PCR is different. There was the one that it thought it was. But we know we didn't hit the memory breakpoint. So odds are the MC pointer is different, but I didn't think to check that. So we got to try that again. <clears throat> Okay, so here, what? why is my pointer? Oh, this is the stupid SDL bullshit. Try it again. Oh, no, I have to exit. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So now we want to make sure we remember what mesh chunk was as well. Oh, let's also find out what the other one is. Maybe it'll be the same. Uh, what did it return? No, that's different. 0x1145dd50. Uh, and then MC is 1148.6850. Okay, that's PCR and MC. Uh, and then. that one up. Oh, we, we need the address of that thing that I just erased. So that's the address of 11489088. All right. 
right. And then go over here. Not sure why that bumped into something there. Uh, am I too far this way? There we go. All right, PCR, MC. MC is the same. Oh, right, I don't need to type either of those. I already have them. Okay, right, MC is not the same. So it's a different MC. So somehow I've ended up with a different MC for this coordinate than I had before. So either the math is wrong, in fact, and I'm looking at the wrong mesh chunk, or uh, I've built it more than once or I've overwritten the slot in the cache. But if I'd written, if I'd actually generated the same spot more than once, I would have trapped in that other place. So, <clears throat> uh, does MC carry around its actual coordinates? Yes, it does. Carries around its chunk X and its chunk Y. And I can see those are negative one and negative one. And that's not right, is it? Rx is zero. To Rx one. Shouldn't the chunk that's negative one go from sixty-four to zero? How big is my mesh chunk size? Are my mesh chunks one twenty by one twenty-eight or sixty-four by sixty-four? I've forgotten. That's what happens when I don't work on this often enough. Mesh chunks are 64 by 64. So let's look at CX0, CY, CX1. Okay, so I must be right on the border. Yeah, so it's supposed to be going. So for this chunk, <coughs> I and J. But the chunk at negative 2 comma negative 1, x0 should be negative 128. Our x1 should be negative 64. Our next 65 is at negative 2. Yeah, right. Get mesh chunk for cord. I think this is the bug. I'm calling mesh chunk for with for coordinate with the wrong coordinates. Uh, it's supposed to be world coordinates, mesh chunk for world. And I go and I compute the world coordinates and then I don't pass them in. I was passing in the chunk coordinates. So it would only be correct for the chunk at the origin. And I just exited because I have to at work and I don't have to at home and then I forget. Uh, what did I want to do? I want to get rid of the azimuth threes. I have a bunch of those in the code, don't I now? All right. Yep, that's fine. So hopefully that will fix it. Why am I? It's all so tweaky though, but. I, that was a weird why am I what am I colliding with there am I just is that just because the ground it's yeah well like why am I colliding with the ground there it, it does let me pass it eventually but so that's just a bug in the physics walking code it doesn't actually isn't checking something correctly like maybe maybe when I'm going into a corner or something this is why I need to get the third person view or something um, so yeah I guess let's do a third person view so <clears throat> uh, let's uh, that was a trivial bug fix, but um, let's go ahead and check it in. I want to get in the habit of checking in more frequently. Oh, and they stopped cleaning that window so I can turn my AC back on. Hang on a second.
it's 83 degrees in here, so it was kind of, it's kind of a little, little important to be comfortable when trying to program. All right, so that's fixed. Don't even know which if that was from the same one or not. That is from the same one. Um, that is from this. Okay. So let me go ahead and check that in. other stuff wait why is all that other stuff not checked for commit oh that is all the stuff I just looked at duh fix collision reaction, bad gather all right now That's 83 Fahrenheit for you Europeans. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they didn't think it was Celsius. All right, so. Uh, um, so I put in the to do. I did this. Um, so I fixed collision gather bug. All right, so I was saying let's do third person. All right, so let's see. Camera. So it doesn't really want to be the camera anymore. It wants to be the player. All right, so first of all, I keep talking about this whole vectory business. I'm pretty sure there's a vectory somewhere in this code base. Maybe it was in the other code that I didn't preserve. Mesh Builder, vectory i. Let's go ahead and from now on try to use a VEC3 uh, instead of just saying that every time. So, And because this is a 3D engine, let's just call it VEC because I'm crazy. Uh, this is just stuff where uh, I, I choose it to do it different ways at different times. And you know, still just trying to figure out which one's right or wrong. Um, you know, this is funny, but let's actually just do it the normal way. Um, and actually, I'm going to switch it to this case convention because <coughs> because making it look like it's C++ is misleading. So, uh, you know, clean up your code. You know, make a decision, an arbitrary like this decision like this. That when you're in the middle of doing something else and fix it, that's totally fine. You know, if if you think it's the right decision. So, and of course, what I was saying is I'm still experimenting, still always trying different things to see what the best strategy is. And this is another case of that, that where uh, I've often done this the uppercase way here. And so I was like, when I started this, I don't know if I actually said it. I don't know what I said, but certainly in hindsight, I would guess that it was a, well, let's try doing it that way. So I tried doing it so it looks the same as C++. And... I've changed my mind. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get commit dash a that. Uh, rename true false to true false. Okay. And. Uh, la, 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 la. So, what was I saying? Um, yeah, yeah, player. So, vec3. So, vec. Uh, so, I destruct. Let's just call it the player for now. Maybe it'll be an object in the long run, but let's just have player position and angles because orientation probably should not be Euler angles for objects, but maybe can always be Euler angles for player. I don't know. And so now. Camera to world space. 
shouldn't be camera to world space anymore. Camera to world space needs to be. Uh, we need the player to have a velocity as well. Okay, so. <coughs> Let's go ahead and spell it out. I won't spell it correctly. Let's not spell that one out. So zoom up here. Rotate view is probably dead code from when I had it animate the thing. Yep, okay. So now we do want a camera angle and a camera location in the long run because that's what we need to render. But for now, I'm going to comment them out so that the code breaks so that I can fix these all up to be player based. And for now, we'll just have one player object and we'll hard code it to a global variable, which is dumb and we'll have to fix later, but one thing at a time. So, so player.x. Player.x. Player.z. And I'm not going to fix these vectors to actually use vec uh, where they're currently threes. I'll do that incrementally over time. X is not a player. Let's get this position dot X. Uh, and this is now player space. Player.vision.x. Campbell, I need to get rid of that because that didn't cause compile error, I think. No, there is no more camera. Our camera is not going to have a velocity because it's just going to be glued to the player. So then this is player.velocity.x. How is it dot x? It's an array, and I'm iterating the array, so we take the address of the first field of it, and we do that. Uh, not the ideal way to do this. Uh, ideally, I'd have, once all of these things get turned into vex, we can do it the right way. So then this is player velocity x, or player, why do we have this code? What is it doing? Oh, it's doing, why well, can't it just always do this? Whatever. You know what? I do it like that to start with and then fix them. You know, I should just have a square function. All right, sorry, uh, checking the chat. So, syntax so error dot, yep, that's clearly wrong. Again, a lot of this is in some sense poor programming practice. All the global variables is kind of terrible, and uh, the fact I'm hard coding this to a specific player, I could very easily have made this a little function that's parameterized on the player. However, I can do that later just as easily when I change it so there's no global variable player and I pass a player into this and I have to change all the dots to arrows you know that will be extra typing that I have to do that I could do it correctly now but 
Um, and sometimes maybe I would do that. Uh, but right now, at least on stream, I'm kind of oriented towards uh, trying to get stuff done as fast as possible, have something to show in some sense. And so I lean more to these small incremental things. Like I'm not going through and changing all the back stuff. Like you saw, I did go through and change all the... Uh, look at that, there's a bug. Um... Uh, you saw I did change all the true-false, but that's because I knew there weren't very many, so I knew it wouldn't take very long. Okay, and here we go. Now, physics move walkable on a player, not on... And this one... We're going to make take a vector, right? Because I want to do a little bit of that improvement. And we'll just leave this being called camera bounds, even though it's that. And then we say player.velocity.z equals... And here's the other place where we can infer, uh, was it minus equals? I forgot already. Yeah, minus equals. Uh, where we can infer the scale because the, uh, right, if this is meters, 10 meters per second, so because it's 20 per second squared, um, because it's 20, that implies that it's two voxels per meter instead of one voxel per meter, which is basically half you know, twice the resolution of Minecraft. Okay, so now we of course have to actually change the physics code to take the vex. And by vex I don't mean that just the guy who makes Minecraft levels. Uh, vec, uh, pause, vec, ball. And now that'll break the implementation. Oh, did I not pass in the right thing? Function incompatible types, camera bounds, I've deleted DT. What was DT? DT. <coughs> Cam ang player dot ang dot x player dot ang dot z player dot ang dot why is it clamp? Seems odd. Oh, x is vertical and okay. And I, that seems to allow you to look straight up and straight down. When and maybe it should reserve it a little bit. Well, let's leave that one. No, let's make that be the player. Player position dot y. Player position dot z. All right. Player zoom is now player dot zoom. And here is where we actually want to preserve because we do want the rendering to actually use the camming and the cam lock. So, and that should use the cam lock. And that should update player position.x. Although we may not need it anymore. Camera to world space light bulb. So that should come out of the player. Although it's a debugging thing, really, so it doesn't matter. And so we copy player dot position. And now we have to fix this. Okay, so now we can go back to this file, cam ang, and uncomment that. Uh, And now I just have to fix this. Vec pause, vec bell. And then this is pause x. And this is bell x. And then somewhere at the end we'll write them back. Do that. Bell Y. Bell X. Bell X. Bell Y. Bell Z. Oh, and by the way, if you do say, say stuff to me, it does help to try to remember to put the. Uh, 
the at symbol and my name and spell my name with the two at the end so that I actually, uh, when I look over there quickly, I'm likely to see it because I trying to not spend too much time looking in the chats unnecessarily. So, all right. So now the only thing that I can think of offhand that's broken is that I haven't actually initialized the player lock, but I did up initialize the camera lock, cam lock. So player location is gonna be where the old camera location was. And the camera location will X, Y, Z, we'll move it negative 10 Y and we'll put it at 80 because I don't know how high the ground is and we'll see where that we'll see if any of that works um, okay so why would the gather fail or is that the gather or is that the collision no oh, that's the collision test so did I like pass the wrong thing in So like presumably I broke something when I did this stuff. Uh, maybe I passed. Oh, maybe the Z of one fifty is too big. Oh, am I limited to a height of one twenty? But that was set to one fifty already. Um. CG of Z only goes up to 144. Why does it only go up to 144? Am I falling super fast? I might be falling super fast. DZ, yeah, I'm falling at a pretty high rate. Um, Bell Z must be huge. So something, somewhere I didn't clamp that properly. Bell Z equals zero. These should equal D, not DX. These should just be pause. There you go. Okay. Okay, so there's a couple problems here. One is that I'm not actually rendering the player yet, so there won't be anything to see. And two, obviously, the camera did not get positioned somewhere that could see anything, and I can't control the camera. So what I actually want to do, instead of trying to get the camera right, is I want to go ahead and have a thing where the camera, for now, just to start with, let's go ahead and snap the camera. What is this code? Oh, that's the old collision test. For now, let's just go ahead and snap the camera. When do we render? Here's where we render. Let's snap the camera to the player. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, in, in a second, we'll go ahead and move the camera away from the player. Um, but to start with, let's just put him in the same spot and make sure we didn't break anything. Ha, ah, not type that. And position becomes A, was that what it was? Yeah, all right. So hopefully this is totally unchanged. No. Okay, so what did I break? Uh, I can see X is Y is zero, Y is zero, and Z is 104.25. But that doesn't explain why I can't see anything. Did I comment out? No. Um. And is that changing when I look around? Okay, if I look up, and now I break. Yeah, 90. I'm looking straight up. Okay, am I like under the ground? Can't unlock. No, I shouldn't be under the ground. So, why can't I see anything? I guess, uh,. Oh wait, so what are the stats printing? Is it claiming to be drawing stuff? Yes, claims to be drawing tons of stuff. Um, uh, K, 
cam so currently cam lock and camming should have the exact same values they used to have uh, and I didn't change did I let's just do that which files have I touched yeah and I haven't changed the rendering code um, so right but this, these get copied back out and they looked reasonable so play or zoom is not getting initialized zoom but it was never getting initialized. oh it must have it was a global i must have had it being initialized as global dunk, dunk, dunk. Uh, i don't know where to initialize this so we'll just stick it in anywhere <laughs> that'll probably fix it okay yep so now the camera is stored separately but it's just being copied so now we use player space to world space where did that go go it's gonna go here player space to world space um, so that takes the output and then it takes what this thing is and we want to be looking along the player's vision and I don't know which direction the player's vision is so let's be way back and see what this does so let's leave that code around just in case I want it okay that's not along the player's vision that's vertical why would that be for vertical? Z is always the vertical. That's also under the play. Oh, welcome to having the light. Um, <coughs> that light source. Uh, that's always secretly zero zero zero, which is a little suspicious. Uh, as if this were computing the coordinates relative to zero zero instead of relative to the player position um well let's do this because that should oops that should just put it glue it to the player again and if it doesn't then i got a bug hey it doesn't i got a bug that's putting me at zero 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 uh, Uh, I'm never adding. Wait, what? What? Why? Why was this? This was supposed to be angle. Um, and it also only seems to be relative. It's not including the translation. It's or only applying the orientation, which I don't want to change because that's used for the physics, the player physics. So, player space to world space. So what we have to actually do at this point is. Plus equal. All right. So now let's try negative twenty along y again because since it's z up facing y, my camera normally faces along y, so that should be behind the player. But of course, I can't really tell where the player is for sure. So let's draw. Go ahead and draw the player instead of wasting time. So where do we draw the light? Uh, render objects. Okay, here we go. So camera bounds, which are gonna be the player size eventually. Let's go ahead and make that a global for now. So we can also access it. Whoops. Uh, so I must have an init function, right? Render init. This isn't really part of renderer in it, but all right, and then camera bounds has to be before that. All right, and then I need to finish writing that code to draw the player to actually use those bounds, uh, and we're not going to rotate it. For now, we'll just draw it, and that's the size. So camera, player, position, dot x, 
Let's look at that SVGL. I assume it draws. No, it draws its center around that. Okay, which is good because that's kind of what we want, except not vertically. Oh, so it's not really what we want at all. Uh, why has this got two branches? Oh, clockwise versus counterclockwise. Uh, let's just commute it and use the same function. Okay, so it's. Float of x size. Size dot x equals camera bounds zero zero one of zero minus camera bounds zero zero. R Z. Okay, so now we have the actual size, which is what we need to pass in to draw box, except that we don't have the correct positions yet. Size.x, size.y, size.z, because the player, we're the coordinates that we track for the player are the bottom of the player, and we need the center because that's what this draw box expects. So that's the average of these. Z. Oh, dum, dum, dum. Did that work? I don't see it. I do not see it anywhere. Let's see if we can get our head inside this tree. Or not our head, but our camera. Why can't I move? Oh yeah, getting inside the tree doesn't help. I need to get inside the terrain. There we go. Nope. Arr. No, I don't see it anywhere. Don't know where it's being rendered. Uh, did I get something wrong in that code? Is the code being run? Code is being run. Pause.xyz. Z is at negative 2. Well, it's that's not right because player, oh, I used camera bounds. Player position is at player position dot x plus. Really need a vector library so that I don't have to write all this stuff out stupidly and have little typos like that. All right, so now hopefully we get it. There it is. See, that is not a very plausible player shape, obviously. Alright, so so right there, where, so yeah, this doesn't seem particularly right. Like, it's hovering above the ground. Let's get out to somewhere flat. It's hovering above the ground, which could be a bug that I'm not computing the position correctly here. Looks like it's one voxel above the ground. Alright, so let's fix that first. So. First of all, what is the cam bounds? Cam raw bounds. Um, so the smallest point is that. The largest point is that. So it's at the feet, but not quite at the feet, which is kind of a weird choice. So I'm going to change that to zero, which isn't going to make any difference because everything is getting offset. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, I see. I wonder what that was in response to. Um, okay, so... Alright, so that shouldn't have changed anything except made it a little bit less tall. Oh, yeah. Alright, so... Uh, dur -dur 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 -dur. Um, right, so it's probably just a bug because I do this code in this walkable physics where I try to find that I'm on the floor of the current voxel. Yeah, so I probably I don't do this stuff right. I'm supposed to hover Z epsilon above the voxel. 
Um, so I collision test there. Um, doesn't this just make me fall instantly? Why doesn't this... Okay, this is the falling case. Oh, but I can't move further than DZ. But this code doesn't test the DZ. This, why does this... Do I just never hit this code? Yeah, okay. No, okay, there I hit the code. Oh, I hit the code if I get a collision. Okay, I see what's going on. All right, so if this move would collide, then I check if I run into sidewalls and if I wouldn't collide, if there are no walls to collide with, wait, I check if, I check if I can keep falling that full distance with no walls. See, this all needs to be commented and that's just, that's streaming. I need to take some time to comment when I'm not streaming. Um... So, move bottom to floor of current voxel. Okay, so this is when the DZ, we know we collide after DZ, so, you, so we don't have to test this. Okay, right, and we assert to make sure we didn't fall too far, right? Okay, I, now I understand what this code is doing. So, the question is, why does that code end up where it ends up? Because it seems to end up one voxel tall, one voxel higher than it should. So it could be because the collision te test is off, or why do we subtract size of zero two? That doesn't make any sense. What was I trying to do when I did that? Why was I taking... All right, this is to decide how much to gather. So I find the center of the guy. That's how much I gather. That's why I need to offset by those. But here I don't understand why I'm offsetting by that. Maybe I meant to be offsetting by the floor map. That would make sense. I'm trying to get the floor to be at the right spot. Let's just try it. But it was only 0.25, so yeah. Min Z minus DZ. That's what the old I of Z was. Now we've moved Z down. And since it didn't collide at the old coordinates, we assumed it wouldn't collide at the new coordinates. So the question is, why does it collide at the new coordinates? So first, let's test that. It doesn't collide before we move it. And this could be dependent on DT, so, all right. So uh, as long as I'm working on this, I'm just gonna force the physics to run at a fixed frame rate. Um, I guess 60. Just so I can make sure this is consistent. Uh, okay, so which one did that die on? Does it die on the first one or the second? Okay, it dies on the second one. So it's claiming that moving the Z to the floor, this should be zero, didn't work. So why does it fail to move it down by that much. Let's 
look at the closing one. Okay, which one does it claim it collides with? That one. So I, J, K. 0, negative 1, 99. Okay, and where are we supposed to be colliding? Min Z is not supposed to be going down to 99. Z0 to Z1. Wait, it's, this is claiming that the top is at 104. Oh, the. Mm, my coordinate is Z is up. And all this stuff is confused. Right, okay. So. This is the bottom. The player, the it's off center because I made the X Y Z not be the bottom of the player. I made the X Y Z be the I location in the player, and so then the player extends two point five higher. Okay, which means that this computation that used zero before was correct because zero is the side that's the bottom. Okay. So now that I've done that, now we go back. Now it won't assert, but it will still fail and be one voxel too high for unknown reasons. Okay. Uh, right, so I want to break here and figure out why we don't go down further. Okay, so there we fail. So Z is at 104.25. So we set next statement. Right, so we have to be careful about numeric precision here because uh, if this value isn't represented accurately, this can blow up. But at the moment, it is ac represented accurately because it's only 0.25. It's, I picked a number that's exactly representable as floats to avoid any random problems. Okay, so then what are these? Z0, 99, Z1, 104. Are these... And I use them as exclusive bounds. So I am testing at 99 and that's the one that breaks, right? It's the one at 99. Okay, so I'm not allowed to have it at 99. And then when I render it, okay, the voxel at 99 extends from 99 up to 99.999. So the feet should be at 100 according to this. So now when we render it, according to this, the feed should be at 100. So pause.z, size.z, size.z, 2, yeah. So yes, the bottom of this is being rendered at 100. And there's a voxel extending from 99 to 100. So, there's a couple possibilities. One is that all the meshes are being drawn one voxel too high. That's actually plausible because of the way I work from top to bottom when I build the meshes. And the fact that I only have 255, not 256. Um, hope that was all still audible while I was sitting. Uh, let me make lunch, make a sandwich real quick uh, while I'm thinking about this. So, what else, how else could this happen? Um, the mesh gathering could be wrong. That seems unlikely. Like I'm not sure how you end up with a one, off by one error in Z only. Uh, whereas the mesh 
being off by one seems pretty plausible. Um, like I can see how the mesh being off by one would happen. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so let's take a look at the mesh builder. Uh, where does that happen? Our Z starts at 256 minus 16. Set input range. Z0 to Z1. Z1 starts at 255. So it looks like it ought to actually be correct. Set mesh coordinates, world, chord, X, Y, Z. Generate mesh for chunk set. I assume we always pass in zero. World coordinates, yeah, zero. So the transform is getting a zero. Um, the output coordinates, because of the way the coordinates are packed, uh, are at most 255, so you can only represent, you can't represent the voxel that extends from 255 to 256, so that's why there's only 255 voxels, because I can't generate the coordinate 256 because of precision limits, uh, because they're stored as tiny integers. And so... Uh, the voxel should extend from 0 to 254. Voxel number 254 should be the largest one. And this all seems reasonable. So I don't think the mesh is drawn one too high. Unless there's like a further off by something error. So let's see this. How do we initialize this? We fill in the top two rows. So 0 to 15, ah, yes, I think we do actually omit the bottom row. This is a thing I, I think I meant to fix and never did. Let's check if it's on the to-do, and then I can just stop thinking if I see it in the to-do. Um, no, okay. So, uh, so, right, what happens is we're building, we set up uh, as valid 18 something 18 tall and then we generate 16 of those voxels so that there's always the boundary is defined so that the generator has the boundaries and the to seed that we seed the top two rows with empty and then build 16 things but that means that very first one we build only has 15 valid 14 15 valid because the bottom two rows, sorry, the top two rows are empty. The topmost row is uh, padding, the, the neighborhood padding. And the bottom row is the neighborhood padding. So the one of the things that we generated doesn't get used. It gets copied around for the next time and does get generated the next time. But on the very last time, we generate zero into the bottommost row and we don't generate it. So in fact, all of this stuff is off by one and we need to subtract one here. And now they're actually at the correct coordinates. <coughs> Except that it, I need to add one, not subtract one. Because I'm calling, I'm generating, uh, at the very end, <coughs> sub one here is getting the mesh that's at row two and so it renders is it off by two seems like it might be off by two but it, on screen it only looks like it's off by one 
Yep, okay, so we get a little Z fighting there. Oh, because we can see we're drawing the wrong side of the cube now. Uh, clockwork, clockwork, clockwise. So this apparently needs to be clockwise. Doom, 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 doom. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's move the camera in closer. And of course the way it pops makes it confusing, but um, so yeah, let's move it in closer. Let's just do that. Oops. All right, there we go. Now, in theory, we could make the Yeah, that looks that seems reasonable. I mean, obviously, I don't want it to pop when it comes up, but the whole point is is that if it didn't pop, it would have to interpenetrate because it's not going up until it's right up against the thing. Uh Okay, and then the question is why was I getting stuck some of the time? Like that. Why did that one decide not to step up? Well, it's because I'm in midair, and the step up doesn't take place when you're in midair. So I need some kind of special role when you're near enough to the ground uh, that the step up role should still apply, even though you're in midair. Because you're not really in midair, right? You should have feet that are moving, and as long as you're close enough to the ground. <clears throat> Um, so that whole walkable logic needs to change pretty significantly to handle that case. That's probably too big. Don't know why that build was so slow. There you go. It's a glowing white creeper that doesn't rotate. And I can make it rotate, but the physics is not going to rotate. The physics is always going to operate on this shape. So now we can check the uh, hole that the physics correctly handles, even though this thing is wider than wider than a voxel it should. There's nothing specific to that size. So, oops, that's not where the back is. There's the back. There we go. That's a good. That's a good test fits in the two wide thing but not in the one wide thing yeah all right so there you go that's all working that seems pretty reasonable and by making it bigger it is actually smoother at dealing with those small bumps because it doesn't fall into those little pits as much but it can still break a little bit if it if it while it's falling it hits something so I do stop to fix that case that doesn't handle and I do need to have it smoothly move up or something ah here we go finally found a too tall thing which prevents me from stepping up there's no jump so I can't jump to get over that but I can go around it of course uh, but anyway so yeah I can rotate it on screen very easily because I'm just using GL immediate mode so I can just slow some throw some rotates in but uh, but I'm not going to rotate the physics shape and so as long as what we're looking at is the physics I don't want to rotate it and not see the physics shape. Why did that? Oh, yeah, it's not textured, so it's, and there's no shadows. So it's really hard to see sometimes what's going on there. And now I can see why I get stuck on these trees, and it's because I don't have slide along code. So until I add slide along code, 
I have to actually turn all the way to the side before it'll let me move. So I probably should work on slide along code. Uh, so let's go ahead and check that in. So that was me changing to the third person camera for what reason? Did I fix something else because of that? No, I think it was just to add it so that I could see what was going on with the physics. What? What is going on here? Um, what did I do? camera. <clears throat> and I'm working on the master branch, oh well. And I'm hiding that. All right. I need to get something to drink. I'll be right back. Someone in the stream is asking about the shadows, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the status of that stuff is. So <clears throat> you'll notice if you look under the trees, there are no shadows due to the trees. Um, instead, I'm doing just a very simple fake ambient occlusion where, <coughs> so I guess it's not fake ambient occlusion, it's real ambient occlusion, it's just ambient occlusion is fake inherently. Let's go out here and take a look. So. All I do is at each voxel, I compute, um, I store whether it's solid or not, I guess. And then uh, the vertex 
each vertex looks at uh, in the direction it's facing. So the vertex, you know, uh, has a normal at, you know, for a given face, there's a normal from that vertex. And it gathers the four surrounding, the lighting from the four surrounding voxels. So if I had real lighting here um, stored in the space, it would gather up the lighting from that space. But all I'm storing is whether the voxel is present or not. That looked like it jumped. Oh, I, how do I, oh, if I go backwards as I go off a ledge? Yeah. Um, so uh, that gather operation means that if the direction it's pointing at, so like, like this vertex here, all the way at the ground, uh, say for the say for the one that's facing me right now, down in that corner, it looks at four voxels. It looks at a voxel up here. Boy, this is really terrible to try to point out with this thing. Um, it looks at the four voxels around it, and three of those are solid, and only one is open. So the lighting that it gathers only comes from the open one, and three of them are dark, so it comes down and is only one quarter as bright as the stuff that's facing the open areas where all four so it just causes a darkening around corners, which is the ambient occlusion effect. And the gather operation is built into the SCP voxel render um, because it is necessary so that if you supply lighting values per voxel, uh, the vertices are continuous, that they share the same lighting values so that you don't get gaps. You can actually see some a sort of triangle artifact that the the lighting is sloped in a particular direction. That's just because we draw the quasis triangles and it's interpolating the the four lighting values at the corners with Goro shading. Uh, and the quad is triangles, so the triangles independently Goro shade. But anyway, so yeah, so the the lighting is just SP voxel gathers up those lighting values and stores them per vertex, per polygon. Uh, and those vertices are totally independent even where they're shared. So it does that gather operation because it is convenient for this look and because it uh, lets those vertices be, have continuous lighting values so that they don't stand out as having lighting artifacts. Uh, if you use the color capability where you can recolor individual voxels and individual voxel faces, those colors will not be smooth across uh, voxel boundaries, you'll see those as sharp edges. And there's no way to actually do colored, I, I can't do colored lighting. Like Minecraft actually does have two colors of lighting and I have no actual way to express that in SV voxel render. And that was just a compromise where I was like, well, I don't want to be Minecraft, so. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, maybe I'll stop there. Um, I mean, I could do more. Um, I'm just not super, have something specific I want to do at this point. There's these, there's a bunch of tweaks to this moving movement system, but I think I kind of want to save those for another time and work on something else. And if I'm going to work on something else, maybe I'll just do it on a different day rather than try to keep going here. Uh, <clears throat> because, you know, I have other things to do other than work on OBBG, unfortunately. So perhaps I will do some of those other things. All right, so I'll uh, check out chat real quick for any things, but for those of you who are watching the archive, uh, see you later.